Are we filming? Because this is yes, so we're filming. Okay. How is it that I'm against jewelry, but I wear it? And not just it, like a lot of it. <laughs> a lot of jewelry. Yeah. Um. And this ain't even uh, all of it. I, it was more jewelry laying on the table outside. That wasn't mine. That was Doesn't mine. matter. It's in the vicinity. Really? Is that how? What? Yes. That's how it works. Yes. <laughs> Holy shit. Totality. <laughs> okay. It's a lot of fucking jewelry. So if my jeweler pulls up and he's got jewelry in his bag. It's all of a sudden mine. That doesn't count. But the well, jewelry. That's what that was. Oh, okay. So I take it back. Yeah. Okay. Nah, but well, when I say I'm for jewelry, but against that, I mean, like, I bought this watch 2016. I haven't bought a watch since. You can ask my jewelry's right there. 2016. I've, three is, years. Is ago. your blow up year? Was my blow? So like, when I first got money, I was like, okay, let me treat myself, whatever. Um, and when I say I'm not, not, not that I'm against jewelry, it's more so like, I'm not trying to, I don't advertise it. You don't see me on Instagram like, yo, look at my, look at my watch, look at my this, because mm. is it cool that I can do it for myself? Yeah. But is it something that I'm trying to advocate for? No. No. Got it. That's what it is. Like, will I buy it? Yes. But will I promote it? No. All right. Yeah. I understand that. Yeah. Yeah. So how are you? Let's start, let's start there. How are you doing? Living the dream, I can't complain. <laughs> See, that's why people hate you. Yes. I'm figuring it. I'm, I'm totally here. Let's start there, because I don't even know where to start. Let's also give context. We're inside of my house, right? I think they know. Well, you, you, they, <laughs> I don't they, have your plaques hanging no, up No, but they might house. think that we rented a warehouse. We hung up plaques. Oh, yeah. Like, I normally do that. I normally do that. So, no, we are. No, we're I, inside I of my house. I am. Don't disclose uh, my address or my Russ, location. I don't know your address. I don't know where I am. But <laughs> <laughs> this nigga live far, like in rich nigga land. <laughs> uh, but I came, I came here, and, and we tried to work this out for a little while, mm -hmm. and we finally got it done. And yeah. unbeknownst to you, but my mission was to come here mm -hmm. and figure you out. I love it, I'm, bro. I want to. We, we could talk for hours. I'm that, here. That is exactly why I'm here. Yeah. So this is the first interview that I'm coming in. I don't have any questions, but I never have. I mean, I'm nothing written down. I never have that. But with you, you I didn't want to research. Yeah, it's good. My introduction to you was bad. Most is. <laughs> I was, uh, that's where we can start. Yes. I was working at Complex. Yes. And I was fighting with them. And long story short, Joe doesn't come to work. Yeah. Russ comes, come, comes to work. Yes. And I was kind of sad. I'm like, shit. Me if too. Gonna, if they're going to have him there. Me too. Then. Me too. Why would they do that? Okay, they, it's just fuck nigga shit that they're doing. Cool. Didn't put that against you. So I'm watching. Me too. Mm -hmm. And then you and the desk have you guys this rift. Sure. And then I'm like, oh, fuck. Now, now I got to not like Russ. You got to ride for the team. I have to ride. I have to ride for... And it's not even the team, because plenty of people have dissed academics, and I've supported them in it. Uh, but a woman is I understand. how I felt. I, I understand. And, and, and I'm glad, like, we need to start here so that it's just clear context with everything, but... Anyone who knows me, they, these, all these same people you met today were in the SUV when we were on the way there, mm. and I was pissed off that you weren't going to be there, because I was like, I'm really only going up there to, like, let's just, let's call a spade a spade. I go up to Breakfast Club because I want the back and forth with Charlemagne, because mm. I know that that's the antagonist, yes. and I want to have that conversation, because I feel like that's, that's a good conversation to have. So same with Everyday Struggle, it was like, no, I want Joe to be, like, what do you mean Joe's not going to be there? Then, they didn't tell you that before you came. They told, we found that out on, the, like, maybe they told us, but I didn't find that out till on the way there at six in the morning, whatever. That's how I know me. And I was like, man, that's fucking whack. But whatever, we're on the way, so we'll do it. But I was like, so my thing, because we got to get this out of, the, out of the way. My issue with you was that it was like, I would have said all those same things if you were there. Now, you might feel like, no, you wouldn't have. I, no, I, I would have loved it. I would have said the same things. And my issue with you was that, you, yes, now you're retired, which is, that's an amazing thing, because let me, let, me, let me add a caveat to this. There's too much, uh, there's too many opinions on hip-hop and music and rap from people, from people who never who, did it. Yes, from people who don't. Like, I don't, no offense to Ben Simmons or Stephen A. Smith, I don't care what y'all think about Kobe. I want to hear what Shaq thinks about Kobe mm. or Jalen Rose. Mm -hmm. So what you're doing is very pivotal because... You are the first retired NBA player being a commentator, mm. right? That opinion is validated. Like, people need to start validating themselves. Before you just start talking about hip hop and music and shit, 
You got to validate your opinion. So my thing, I want, I are, want. Are there not to cut you off? Yeah. Are there opinions that you think are validated from people who have never made a song? Like you mentioned, Charlemagne earlier. I know he's never made a song, but we. Want nah, to but I, I well, I like the reason why I fuck with Charlemagne is because I can tell he marches to his own drum. One hundred percent. Yeah. So that's like so. I just, yeah. So I just respect that. But now with you, the issue I took with you was that like, nah, he's played in the league before. And, and, and when you came back on the show that next episode and you were like, oh, doesn't his dad do this? Like you ran with a gossip rumor as if you're not. Wait, which one? The, of, of my dad works for some, for, for a label. But why is that a gossip rumor? Because it was literally created by a Kanye to the forum. That I'll, I'll expose the whole shit. Yeah, I want to talk about it. But- Kanye to the forum, which is run by 13 year old white kids, literally made up a rumor that my dad works for Columbia, which is how convenient. You're, time out. Time go ahead, out. go ahead, we can get Your into it. Your dad does not work for Columbia? Never has, never will. What are you talking about? Your uncle? Never. Who works for Columbia? No one. Who works for the marketing firm? No, what are you, like this is what I'm saying. I don't know, I'm asking. This is what I'm saying. And I have never been to Kanye to the, I don't know what they're doing over there. <laughs> I'm trying to give you the lay, how, how it went. Kanye but to I have the to fo- see if you're lying about it. I mean, this is what I'm saying. So this, this was the issue. Kanye to the Forum is literally a blog forum site run by 13-year-old white kids yes. who create rumors. That's what they like do. All of them. And so then that turned into, it got picked up by, I'll say all the names, at Philly Customs, who's a blogger who runs Rap Dose, who showed love early on. Mm-hmm. And I showed love to him early on. Like, yo, that's dope. Um, but I, he felt a way about when I criticized how, I said blogs don't matter. This was two years ago. I remember that. Right. So he took offense to that. So a then lot he, of people took offense yeah, to that. Yeah. So then he ran with that narrative of, well, fuck you, your dad, even though it was literally an internet forum chat site. But once someone runs with it and it spreads, then it becomes it something. spread. Yeah. Then it becomes something. But literally, like, if you do five seconds of research, it's debunked. The it research make is any, where I got that from. What did you get? What did you get? That your dad really? works for whatever the fuck marketing Columbia, your cousin. Where Barbara. is that? Pro- it's literally know. like but how would it's I, fabricated. But how could someone confirm? I'm not. Well, I'm not searching for your dad. That's no, I know, saying. but no, but this is the problem. How is can that we confirm it? The problem is there's no checks and balances in the internet. Yes. The problem is that I could. Uh, you could say it. We're doing this interview right now. I could literally tweet right now on the phone. Right now, I could pull my phone and say, currently, I'm doing cocaine with. Selena Gomez, yes. and it would get 30,000 retweets, and everyone would say, and now maybe in two days it would be like, well, that was bullshit, but there would be some people who'd be like, yo, I think there might be some truth to that. Oh, well, yeah. And they would start trying to pee, and you could just make shit up. So why my issue with you was that you know that because you played in the league before. So I was like, why would you run with the internet rumor? And I understand yeah. because you were... It, it, you know, you're with, at the time you're with Complex, so I got it, but I was also like, man, like, why would he run with that? Because he knows what's going on. He's not academics. He's not, he's not this, like, he's not a journalist. He's a, he's Jalen Rose. Yes. You played in the league, so why are you uh, piling on to the oh, bullshit? I didn't, that. I didn't know that. I thought that, was, I thought that, that was a fact. Yeah, no, but the fact that you didn't take time to do the research was offensive because it's like, you know what it's like to have the media bullshit with you so the fact that you then joined the media to bullshit another artist i was like okay. this is bizarre to me because he knows he knows the psyche and the dynamic of this whole relationship of artists with media and lies and etc because if you would have done any research why would i put out 11 mixtapes and 96 songs on soundcloud for free if i had a plug at columbia the whole time oh no let me get it straight let is me your do dad th- here here as in in this house yeah no. Just ask him. So let me, do, let me do the internet thing. How, what sense would it make? I put out 11 mixtapes for free, all self-produced, everything, and then 96 songs, but I had a Columbia plug the whole time? Oh, no, no, but let me get a, let me get a straight. I conveniently had the Columbia plug only when I partnered. Well, let me interrupt you. Uh, I did say that. I did think that. Yeah. I did think I got that from research. You got it from Twitter. Not Twitter. I'll never get it from there. But later on, much later on, it no longer really mattered. It doesn't, it doesn't, but it, there are certain things I take offense to, and uh, I don't take offense to people saying, fuck Russ. Well, for you as an artist. Well, because, yeah. because there are certain things I'm very proud of, because I know I work my ass off 
And that's why I'm saying yeah. that later on, it didn't matter. Like, I, relationships are a part of this business. Yeah. And I've seen plenty of people have them yeah. and fail. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, your dad, who don't work wherever, works wherever. Once I, once I yeah. learned a little more. Yeah. Uh, and Ian and I were just talking about this this morning. You can't fake work ethic. Yeah. You can't you can't pretend to make X amount of songs and have X right. amount of uploads right. and really and the more you listen to you speak, it's not an accident. There was there was a plan there. Yeah. So I didn't give a fuck. Well, yeah, but I hear you and I appreciate that, but I also don't like that in your head you're giving an asterisk where it's like even if that was true, too bad because there was this, there was the work ethic. There is no asterisk, and, that, and it's offensive to me because I busted my ass for this, and I didn't, like, and, 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 and when people ask me about my dad, I did the Rap Radar thing, and Elliot asked me, because it's family. We don't, I only had family. We moved around a lot, so we didn't know people when we moved. All we had was family, so, and I'm, I'm Sicilian, I'm Italian, like, I'm with strong family roots. I'm not throwing people under the bus, but it, it, it's fucked up when you feel pushed to the point that such a lie has been told about you that the only way to debunk the lie is to throw your dad under the bus. Meaning my dad realistically tried to start his own company and it failed miserably. And he was working out of the house upstairs in his pajamas in, 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 in the room, in my parents' room, trying to make it work. It didn't work, which is why my tune core came in and the music saved it and everything. And like, that's the real story. The real story is that my parents went broke in my tune core, me, my ownership saved us. So when, so when people try and cast that narrative onto me, it's offensive because you don't know how fucked up my family got because of the opposite. You think my dad had some the Columbia job. Is the total, the total opposite. Yeah, but it's, like, it's the, but it's like the reality is that my parents went through the worst time of their lives because they went broke, because my mom wasn't working, and because my dad tried to be an entrepreneur and it didn't work out. And so everything went downhill, but luckily my TuneCore, because I invested in myself in 2010, in 2011 on TuneCore, I started making money enough to at least pay the rent and, and, and keep the lights on. The fact that th there's a narrative of like, oh, well, your dad had, I'm like, are you fucking, are you serious? I can't say retarded because my mom will slap me, but are you fucking, yeah, are you it's kidding? Offensive. Yeah, it's a, I've learned it's offensive. I apologize, but it's like insane to me because it's like, you have no idea those conversations of my dad asking me for $5 in gas money. You have no idea those conversations of my dad, who was the man, at, uh, man of the house asking me to, to, to pay the, this bill and whatever, like, Y'all don't know. So the fact that y'all are trying to cast this narrative like I'm an industry plant when I literally have songs called Exposed where I'm exposing industry plants, it's like, oh, I get it. I see what it is. You know what I learned? The more you poke out the bullshit in the world, the more the world tries to tell you that you are the bullshit. That's true, too. So if I, if I come out and say, you're an addict, you're an addict, you're an addict, what does the world do? Let me try and piece together two plus two equals seven. You're an addict. And that's what they try and do. So I try to call out industry plans because it's whack. And what does the world do? You're an industry plan. It's like insane to me. It's insane to me. It's insane. So then let's start at 2010 then. Okay. TuneCore. Yes. You're introduced to TuneCore how? I'm introduced to TuneCore by me and Bugis, my best friend, since we, we, I moved to Atlanta when I was going into eighth grade. Met mm -hmm. him in eighth grade. So when I was 12. Um, we've been friends ever since. Um, and we were making music in the basement. And was it the, good? At the time, it was the greatest shit in the world. And yeah. that's the key. That's the key to everything. Like, because if I thought at 17 or at 18 that it was trash, I wouldn't have made it to 19 making music. I thought it was amazing. Got it. Um, but no, it was trash. Looking back, it was Got trash. It. But the thought of, how do we put this on iTunes? That was it. That was the thought. And I came over to Boogie's house one day, Boogie's mom's house, where that's where the studio was. Mm. It started in my parents' house, and then we moved to Boogie's house. And Boogie was like, yo, I figured it's it out. Still in 2010. You're still in 2010. Yeah. January 1st, 2010, the exact date is when Boogie's got the equipment in his basement. It was my second semester senior year of high school. We'll, uh, we'll always remember the date. How much did he spend on the equipment? 5K. Tops. 
See, man, listen, 2010, that, that was a great time for you niggas to make music, man. Well, also, like, people need to understand, right? 5K sounds like a lot, but people also have to understand, if you're spending 100K an hour, right? Let's call it 100 an hour for studio time, and you're spending, what do we want to say on weed a month? 400? 300? Don't give me that out. <laughs> no, but, like, like, but, 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 but basically what I'm saying is like 5K sounds like a lot. 300, except, except, 300 is the week. Except when, it, right. But I'm saying like when you're coming up and shit, right? Oh, yeah. So, okay, you can pocket, you can save 5K. It sounds grandiose. Of but the reality is like if you just chill out for it. It's a achievable. Second, yeah. 100%. So like that's what we did. So the studio was in his basement. I remember. We no, were, I only. I'm only in in awe because at this time in New York, anyway, all of, all of the major recording studios were shutting down yeah. because the young kids had the technology to go yeah. spend five k right and do whatever we had to do in our house. That's it. So okay. yeah, owning the means of operation was the biggest key to us. Like not paying for studio time and not paying for this, not paying for producers. Owning the means of operation is. Step one of being a boss. You learned that where? We studied every interview. We studied Birdman interviews. We studied, I, like, despite of whatever the internet wants to say, we've been listening to Nipsey since I was 17. We pulled up at Nipsey's store when I was 18, when we were 18. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, we've been on that. And we, an 18-year-old at that time is only, is only allowing Nipsey Hustle lyrics to resonate if they, too, are on that same wave. You know, that ownership wave. And that's what we were on. We started Diamond, D-I-E-M-O-N, Do It Everyday Music or Nothing. We started the LLC together. You know, we were reading Napoleon Hill, Deepak Chopra. Like, we were just, we were seeking knowledge. And so uh, we had the studio in the house. And I remember there was a conversation, just how do we get this on iTunes? So we Googled, how do you put your song on iTunes? TuneCore was just one of the first things that popped up. Got it. And so we did that. And so... And then that was that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that was literally cool. that. And so the craziest thing to me is that as an artist, I always tell artists, I'm just like, yo, how have you not even asked yourself the question? How do you, how do I upload my song to Spotify, Apple, whatever? Like, you know, and all we did was have the, the just, we were inquisitive and we, and, and we were proactive about trying to figure out how to do it. We figured it out 2010. And so I put out my first project uh, 2011 End of 2011, and I put out 11. 2011. December 2011, Velvet, December 2011. TuneCore. Tune and I put out 10 more projects after that. The Wait, last, slow down. Yeah. Over what span? Yeah, oh, no, oh, that's oh, what I was about to tell. Oh. So 2011, December, I put out Velvet. Uh, the 11th project I put out was in September of 2014. So we're talking, you know, 11 projects in the span of not that long. Why, why did you do that? Well, because, why, and, why and how? Well, the reason why I did it, because I was making so much music. And I always wanted, John Mayer has this crazy quote where he says, if you hang, it, I'm paraphrasing, but mm. basically, if you hang on to a song too long, you're late to your own party. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. So, and as an artist, I, obviously you get that, where it's like, if I make a song in February, I'm not putting it out next February. I'm over this shit. Everything might change by next February. Right. So I was just like, and because I was able to do everything, I didn't, call, I didn't need to call anyone. Now, at that time, was it the best it could be? Nah, but it was me. And so I was making songs. And once I had enough to put out an album, I would put out the album. And so then two put, months would pass, and I'd be like, I got 20 more songs. I'm putting out the album. So you just, you just working, dishing. Working, Work, dishing. Yeah. Working, Period. tune core. What was the... Now, well, how are you gauging success? Now, let me, yeah, so now let me say this. After 11 projects, now we're talking from December 2011 to September 2014. You're broke still. 11 projects broke. Cut it. Barely 1,000 followers on anything, right? So just nothing. But no. broke with catalog. Broke with the catalog. But broke with, there was really no traction, right? Because I'm still sitting there in the basement with 1,000 followers. Which so. is why catalog that you own is very important. Yes, Yes, because now, in hindsight, that's the greatest shit I ever did. Of course. Because there's certain songs of those that are now gold. You know what I'm saying? But um, So I'm sitting there, and I, it's 2014, and I'm like, man. Us old, older artists need reparations. I just, we need, I'm not a, mad at we that. need retroactive pay. Well, these you know, niggas just put these motherfuckers. You know what's crazy? You, you, know, <laughs> you know how I feel? I feel, and this is going to happen. I'm glad it's on camera. The streaming rates are going to change 
to behoove artists and benefit artists more. Do you know how long I've been? I think I'd be dead by the time they do that. I know, but you know what's fucked up? Is that it better? Like, I would my kid would be cool. It better be fucking retroactive. I don't. You, well, you know, I, I like, know it's not gonna be, but it better. Well, don't be. don't say that. Don't say that because some of the some of yeah. these labels, uh, when they're trying to be cool with the artists and be artist yeah, friendly, yeah, yeah. they say, uh, "All right, we're gonna take uh, all the money we took from the streaming. We're gonna give it to you guys." Yeah. So I mean, who knows? Who knows what they'll try to do? Yeah, but that's why, like, the best bet is to own your shit. So to just put it in a nutshell, 2011 December, I released my first project. Now this is all self-produced, engineered. I'm not calling anyone. It's all produced, mixed, master, engineered, written by me. And I took pride in that because I knew that there was, I, I respected each role. I knew that each role played a part. The mixer is the X factor, the engineer, all these things. Um, but so from 2011 to 2014, I put out 11 projects and I'm broke and I'm, I'm not on, I'm not successful. I have a thousand followers and I'm like, all right, well, at a certain point, you got to look at yourself and be like, maybe it's me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, all right. I'm like, nah, the music, I was always confident in the music. I started questioning the approach. And so I started looking at, at that time, SoundCloud was still, to me at least, it was new. And I was like, man. We're in 2014. 2014. This is fall 2014. So I started looking at SoundCloud and I'm like, and I'm looking at plays and I'm noticing that the most amount of plays on every artist's SoundCloud, when it comes to them dropping an album, it was the first song or it was a big feature, but mainly the first song. And then it would tail off. So I was like, oh, what this tells me about consumer behavior is that everyone is down to listen to one song. It's just that second song, we're out, yeah. you know? So I was like, okay, what if I just drop one song albums every week? Because I'm dropping three albums a year. Let's call it 14 songs, three albums a year, right? What is that, 42 yeah. songs a year? That works smarter. So I was like, okay, I don't have to change up how much I'm working or even increase how much I'm working. I just have to distribute it differently. So I was like, instead of putting out, uh, you know, 42 songs a year, 52 songs a year over the course of four albums, I'll put out 52 songs a year over the course of week by week basis. Because no one's trying to listen to an album that no one, from someone no one's ever heard of. But y'all are down to listen to the first song. So I was like, cool, I'll do a song every week until so I, I will trick up. the system for a year. Yeah. So I, so I was like, you know what? I'm going to put out a song a week until I blew up. It's a now, brave, brave approach. It was, but like at that point, this is 11 albums of failure. But that's why I'm saying brave approach, because 11 albums of failure, I don't know if I feel like motherfucking making a song every week now for y'all. Right? Y'all better go hear this shit. Right. Well, that was, that was the, I agree. And that's the, that's, the, that's the intrinsic just thing that exists in you or it doesn't, where it's like, where you start thinking, that's what I'm saying, there's, 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 there's such a chip see. on my shoulder where it's like, fuck y'all, I don't care if I put out 11 albums, y'all are bugging, I'm ill, right? Yeah. So I had to prove, fuck proving y'all wrong, I had to prove to myself that I was right Maybe about right. doing this music shit, you know? So now, but I also, I, I, I strategize this because I was like, I'm not about to just put out a song a week and be scrambling in every, every day to record a song. I was like, you know yeah, what? Yeah, because you're like, still broke. Still broke, so I was like, let me go away for a second four months as far as putting out music. Let me stock up on 26 songs, which is half a year. And let me also have an album, a rough, very rough skeleton of an album that I'm working on because I also knew, I, I believe so wholeheartedly that if I do a song a week, it'll blow up. And I knew after studying the game, I didn't want to blow up and then I have to scramble to make an album. I wanted to blow up and have an album sitting and be like, cool, y'all elected this song to blow up or these three songs, here's the album, boom, cute. I just want to say we're, that we're now at about four years of just amazing preparation. Yeah, yeah, no, the, but that, that's what this is. This is. This is not an accident. This is like, it's planned, it's planned. So I had, I had 26 songs in the vault and I had a 14 song album before I ever put out the first song on my SoundCloud. So when I start putting out songs on my SoundCloud, right, week by week, I got 26 no, songs, I'm ready to go. And I also have 14 songs y'all have never heard because I think they're too good. In fact, a song I have called Cherry Hill, which I made in 2015, uh, I sat on until my debut album. And now it's gold. And that foresight is what it takes because I sat on it. Even being broke and being like, I got to put my best foot forward because I'm trying to get on. But I was like, this one is too good. But that's how much I believe that even though this one is probably better than all these, I have enough good songs and I believe in myself enough that I can put out these and this will be enough to blow up. And when it does blow up, 
this will be able to come out. And now that song is gold, about to be platinum, but that's discipline. And so that's why it, it, it's about foresight, it's about preparation, and ultimately it's about self-belief. Because if you don't believe in yourself at all, you're not doing that. You're like, shit, any great song I made has got to go out. The best songs I made at that time, I was sitting on because I believed in what I was doing that much. I just, I, I didn't believe in my approach. Did what you, week, what week, not to cut you off, what week in the- in Did the, you start seeing like a- Yeah. Well, that was, that was the fun part about doing a song a week was that it was gradual. So I always tell uh, uh, Boogus who, you know, we- Boogus whose mom's about sick of y'all at this point. That's a lot of recording. Probably, yes, absolutely. Yeah. But um, it's, you notice little spikes. It's not this, you drop a song one day and tomorrow it's huge. Not back then, you know, and, and, and not when you don't have any connections. Okay. This is why the Columbia thing is offensive because it's like, <laughs> so if I had Columbia... But it the, makes so much sense. No, but it doesn't make thing. any... But, but like, but it makes so much sense if you when don't know uninformed. the story. Yes. Yeah, when so you're it's, uninformed, yes. Yeah, but it's just like when you're actually informed, you're like... But that's why I wanted to see you because there are a few other guys that I do believe to be plants. And when I was thinking that you might be a plan, it just didn't add up really with the other guys. It, it was like add, if there's a, a multiple choice of sense. which one of these people might not be a plan. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know if Russ is a plan, man. Because it, it's really not, though. <laughs> like when you really do the education on I can the see up, Columbia signing some plants. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I could see a plant with this sauce. You look good. Thank you. <laughs> it looks like somebody might have made this up. Yeah, but I, I get it. But it, when you do the education, it's like, oh. Well, this doesn't make any sense because I'm giving you the blueprint. You feel me? I'm giving you the blueprint of me making a song every week uh, and, and strategizing in a basement. And, and like I said, there was spikes. So you put out one song and maybe your biggest song at that point. Where was, was this basement? So it went from Boogus' basement. No, but where's, where's, where is this? Where is it? Oh, 10 minutes from here. Really? Atlanta. Yeah. 10 minutes from here. And then also Kid Super, who's a... I'm wearing his this pants right now. This thing is making all this noise from over here? Yeah. But that's how we... <laughs> so, like, let me, let me even give the insight to that. So, Boogus' mom's basement, right? It was... There's this, there's this concept that Deepak Chopra have, has, which is the field of pure potentiality, where, like, when you access it, you just tap into something. And that basement, that room, that, that space, it was... It was walking into the possibility of me uh, accessing my full potential. Yeah. And I was like, I was gassed, bro, because as bad as being broke is, being broke also provides a certain hunger that you don't have when you have money. You know? Do you believe that? Absolutely. Tell me more about that. But I will, but now let right, me just later, finish. Later, yeah. Later, later. Um, so I was doing that, but when I was putting out songs, there was no way to really gauge. Um, not even that there was no way to gauge, oh, is this working or not? You would catch a little spike. So I put out a song called Willy Wonka, February 2015. Um, and it got, I don't know what it got, 10,000 plays in the first week, as opposed to 4,000. So, but that, for me, was a win. So I'm thinking I'm on the right path. And so you start doing these little, people, people have a fucked up where they just only want to, they're, they're living in the comparison realm where they put out a song, gets 10,000 plays in a month, and they feel gassed, and then they see Justin Bieber, and it comes out, and it's 40 million, and they're like, oh, well, I'm not shit. Yeah, they're discouraged. Yeah, but to me, I was living in my own world. I was, I was battling myself. I said, you know what? Seven, 10,000 plays in a week. I'm ill. I'm that guy. I just got 4,000 plays last week. You know what I'm saying? And so there was little spikes. It was that song. It was, it was but it was really 2015, and I always say, like, I can't be naive and say, oh, if you just put out 80 songs in a year, you'll blow up. It's like, nah, let's, let's be clear. It was also the quality of the songs because the summer of 2015, I was staying at Kid Super's basement. Like I said, the pants I'm wearing up in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Right? Yeah, I was always in somebody's basement. Yeah, for sure. I, I'm just very into that aesthetic. <laughs> but um, it's very like it drives you. But, um, so I'm in his basement. He's got a storefront. And I'm in his basement, and I'm just making songs. That's it. I'm broke. I'm spending twenty dollars a day on food. Guys still making songs, bro. You know what I'm this saying? Is amazing. But I'm, I'm, I'm. You know, he lives in Williamsburg. He's across the street from a deli, down the street from the Chinese spot. You spend five dollars, you get food. like. So I was just, I wake up whenever I'd wake up, get some food, come down, go back into the basement, make songs, and uh, it was, it was that summer, where. 
I made I made too many, and I'll explain all these. I made too many. I made what they want. I made losing control. I made pull the trigger, and I made do it myself. Now, all five of those were not done in that basement. Pull the trigger was done in that basement. Cherry Hill was done in that basement. Uh, but these are these are songs that are now have sold over eight million, nine million records. So I wasn't just making bullshit though. Too granted, I had at that point I had four thousand followers. But I was making quality songs. It was just that the audience wasn't there yet. Those, those songs basically put the rest of the world onto my catalog, which then formed my fan base. Because put it like this, right? If you're an artist and you got one big song out, if I find out about you and I Google you, I'm like, oh, this is sick. I want to I listen to you. You got one song. I, I don't even have the possibility to become a fan. You don't have enough material out for me to become a fan. Not a hardcore fan, mm. but whenever anyone found out and finds out about me, they find 300 songs. So you literally instantly is, become a hardcore fan. Which is delightful fan. as a consumer. Yes. I love it when I find out about a new, a new act and then I do a search. And, and there's have, so much. They have discover. music. I go, oh, shit, I'm, I'm getting all of this. Yeah. Yeah, I understand you, that. You, you, know what I, you know what I translated to? It's like a TV show. I didn't start watching Game of Thrones till April of this year, right? Everyone was always telling I was getting tagged, like, you look like Jon Snow. And I was like, who the fuck is Jon Snow? This is like the past three years. I never, I never bought into it. I never researched it. I just saw Game of Thrones, but I never thought anything of it. Mm. Uh, me fucking with, you know, whoever I was fucking with, and, and my brother's a big Game of Thrones fan, et cetera. However it worked out, I started watching Game of Thrones April of this year. But I started watching it on season one. But the fact that there's seven seasons and then the eighth season was the finale, I instantly become a fan because there's enough material of y'all to become a fan. Now, if someone had been trying to tell me Game of Thrones is the sickest shit ever <laughs> and all Game of Thrones has is one episode, how can I yeah. become that big of a fan? So it's the same thing with an artist. Like We're all a bunch of TV shows. And whether it's a... Whether it's a Tyler the Creator or it's a Logic or it's a or it's a Post Malone or it's a whoever it is, they're TV shows, and you either like the TV show and you're a fan and you're a viewer, or you're not, you know. And it, and, and so with Game of Thrones and and with me, it's just I have more than one episode, which is why once you found out about me, you found a catalog, you found eleven seasons, my albums, and then you found ninety six songs. So at that point, I mean, you're just you're a fan. We're at 2015 now. 2015, yeah, tw okay, so 2015, we're putting that out. 2016, because I put out hits, you know? I put out hits. Uh, amongst those songs every week, some of them were hits. Losing Controls and What They Want and these songs that have plaques on the wall, like, some of them were hits, you know? Yeah. Pull the Trigger, Pull the Trigger, Losing Control, What They Want, and Do It Myself. Those four came out in between the months uh, I would say June and December of 2015. What they want. Yeah, and, and losing control is over here. I don't see it. Oh, uh, okay. The blue. Got it, got it, got it. I see so, it. so those came out within five, six months of Two each other. Two times platinum. Go platinum. By the time this comes <laughs> out, what they want just went triple platinum today, and losing control is going quadruple platinum definitely by the time this is out. Like this is why people hate you. Yeah, well, you, 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 but it's like, you should hate yourself. You should hate yourself because not nah, why? Because I'm not doing anything that you can't do. Yeah, but that's not the message that comes off. Who's yeah, but that like honestly, bro, I don't I don't become successful as I do if my message, message is message, so fucked up. Your people messages should, are great. But I'm saying like people try and act like, oh you're such a your message they try and act like how I say things and what I say is so fucked up. The framing of... If it is so fucked up, then why does it work? There's a bunch of fucked up shit that works. I'm not being a negative fuck up, though. My message is not a... Even That's the how same thing that the crackhead that comes in the barbershop trying to sell a VCR says. I'm not a crackhead, and I'm not selling you a VCR. I'm well, a successful person selling you a belief system. There we go, okay. And so, if it works, and you're just mad at it because of the how... I suggest you get a fucking backbone. I got nothing to do with you and your lack of. You feel me? Get a fucking backbone. 
Makes sense, but we're just supposed to be nicer to people. That yeah, but like this that. is hip hop. This is hip hop. If I can't be abrasive and and, and flagrant in hip hop, Russ, I'll be honest. Then give me a place to be abrasive and Russ, flagrant. You feel to, me? I have to be honest with you. I, I don't. I don't even know what this is hip hop means anymore. Me neither. Me neither. I used to say that. Me neither. I used to say this is hip hop. Yeah. But then it kept changing. Yeah. And shit just kept happening. And I have no idea what's going on. So I'm glad to hear you say it. Somebody who's yeah. more in tune with all this young fuckity shit. Yeah. Speaking of young fuckity shit, and I want to get back to your timeline. That peer group that you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, I thought that was an interesting group. You said Post. You said Tyler. You said Logic. Oh, I was just mentioning names. Yeah, sure. I know, but do you view them as uh, your peer group? Yeah. I, I, well, I view them as like we're we're doing this thing at the same time. You know. So at that point, you're by default peers. Uh, and by default competition? Nah, because honestly, I just, I just, I know what I'm doing. And I feel like what I'm doing is just, it's Working. just different. It's just different, you know? I'm, 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 I'm trying to, my message is different, but I respect what they're doing. But it's different, it's different, you know, what I'm saying? But like I said, we're doing it at the same time, so I get it. But Tyler, uh, Tyler's amazing. Tyler's brand equity is amazing. Do I listen to the music? No. Because it's not for me, but this is what I'm saying. Back to the TV show, it doesn't matter if I watch. Uh, I got friends who don't watch Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. Guess what? Game of Thrones doesn't care if you watch it or not. This is the number one show in the, in the yes. world. So me listening to Tyler Creator's album, it doesn't matter. You know, do I listen to it? But do, am I right? Nah, but it doesn't matter if I listen to it because I respect it's a really it. Good album. I, I, no, I listen yeah. to it. No, I check out everyone's shit. Okay. I respect it. I respect it for what it is. I respect it because it's a TV show that's working. So I respect that. And I respect that you're doing you more than anything. I respect that you're doing you and you have brand equity. But do I watch that TV show every day? No. Yeah, got it. I understand. No. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, that's what's beautiful about all of this is that every artist is their own TV show and you don't have to watch it. You don't have to tune in. But you do have to understand that if... 15 million people are tuning into this TV show. It doesn't really matter if you are or not. Like, I always get comments, like, if, a, if an academics will post me or whatever, uh, you'll always see the comments of, still never heard a Russ song. Yeah, but I never heard a Russ song. Though I'm like, y'all are literally admitting how inconsequential y'all are. Because how are you commenting on a picture of plaques and your comment is, but I've never heard a song? You are literally admitting how little you matter. Because the fact that you haven't heard a song and this is still the reality should let you know that you don't matter. You are so ego driven that you think that, well, if I don't even hear it, if I don't listen to it, then it's not shit. You don't matter, bro. Like, keep that shit pushing. Tune into your favorite TV show. I'm making my shit over here. You don't got to fuck with it. Yeah, fast then, forward. Yeah, but then, then isn't, that, uh, isn't that contradictory to this is hip hop? Is that hip hop? Well, the people commenting are thirteen-year-old white kids who say the N-word in Sperry, so they're not even they're not even contributing to the sphere. There's of, a lot of the thirteen. Of there's a lot of the thirteen-year-old white kids that say nigger in their spare time, and I don't really view them as hip hop, but they're here. Well, but you gotta understand. But those those are the they're same here. kids who are giving the streams. Like, put it like this: Do you think? Do you think kids in the hood, right? Or you think black kids in the hood are bumping Lil Pump? They're not. They're not. No, they're not bumping Lil Pump. So. They're, they're not. So at the end of the day, it's like you are a lot. Hip hop has now, because the floodgates are open and everyone's got an Instagram and 13 year old. Why is Lil Pump hip hop? No, but why? Because I'll tell you why. Because the fact that the floodgates are open, meaning social media is out. And so. That's why. That's it. And so now 13 year old white kids like who aren't Pump. in tune. They can have a meme page with 300,000 followers and their friends can have ones and they can influence uh, what is the current cool trend in hip hop. You got it. Now you're basically what's happened is you are allowing 13 year old white kids to tell the world what hip hop culture is. That's the problem. And now, look, I want to say on camera, am I black? No. Am I making a mockery of black culture, though? No. There are people who, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm done biting my tongue with this shit. There are people like the Lil Pumps and, and, and the Smoke Perps and, and just the, the people who are using 
the fact that hip hop is the coolest thing to be doing right now. They're using that as a marketing <clears throat> tool to be buffoons. They're using it to scream on the camera, fuck this AP. But what if they're really buffoons? That's, and I don't know, because I've never met these No, it doesn't matter, bro. It doesn't matter. It's a ma- it's, they it's can still be, a mockery. They can be buffoons. It's the fact that they're being elected Pushed. to the forefront. And what I'm saying is that the people electing them to the forefront are 13-year-old white kids. And the fact that there is no more, uh, uh, there is no gatekeepers. System. I understand that people yeah. say there's no checks and balances. Yeah. There's no checks and balances so that, bro, pick a kid in this fucking gated neighborhood that we're in right now. Pick a kid, hold on, put, pick a kid, put face tats on him, tell him to pop Percocets on camera, and tell him to turn in the back, turn in the dirt, and, and, like, and, and tell him to spend 5K, he'll be on academics tomorrow. And it's just like, and all of a sudden, you have to understand 13-year-olds, 14-year-olds, they don't have the mindset where they can decipher what's real and what's not. So people like Lil Pumps and, and, and these type of kids who are just bullshitting, they are literally telling the rest of the world, the Russias, the Chinas, they're telling the world that this is what it means to be black in a sense. And that's the problem. And that's the problem. And I understand that I'm not black, but God forbid, right? If China looks at me and says, this is what it means to be black, they shouldn't because I'm not black. But if they do, at least it is not ridiculous. At least I'm talking about self-sufficiency, ownership, music, you know what I'm saying? Like, as opposed to what's being pushed to the forefront, which is absolute clownery. And it's a mockery. It's a parody, bro. Don't it's a leave. parody. And motherfuckers can say whatever they want to say about it. I'm not, I'm not supposed to be liked for that comment. The only, uh, I don't think you say anything wrong. Um, they may not like the messenger. <laughs> but Yeah, I'm used to that. A few problems I have with what you just said. Yes, fine. <laughs> For everything that you put on the 13 year old girls, I, I put on the labels. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because these young children are so impressionable, impressionable and they don't have to wear it all, you know, they're, they're targeted. I never used to understand why labels would, would rather you, the younger, the better. Yeah. As I got older, this is why. So you target the kids who don't know shit about shit, uh, and now you are pushing this image of I don't even know what to call it to the to the top to the top of black yeah. culture yeah that we don't own yeah. us we as in blacks there's yeah. nothing black about Vivendi yeah yeah so now that gets me in a whole different bag yeah and now I'm not mad at the 13 year olds and now I'm not mad at the labels I'm not mad at the 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 artists that are running around talking about popping perks and pushing all these negative stereotypes and stigmas out there because y'all are pawns yeah for sure well it's because the 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 industry is using black kids as weapons of mass destruction yes that's what's happening and so yes. they're they're using black kids to further the destruction of the black community yes and and at that point i'm not gonna win that battle by myself but i definitely will say something about it (laughs) self-awareness is important yeah like i'll definitely say it i'm not gonna win it but i'll say it i'll say it because i also know this life ends and i also know that when i die and you run these interviews back you'll be like russ was on some shit you know what i'm saying and so see that's what i'd be wanting to say when they run my interviews back but then i watch my interviews and i'd be saying a bunch of fuck shit yeah that's fine that's fine because it's it's about it's about expressing your truth you know and it's just i don't know man i just be i just i just see through a lot of the shit and i and i speak on it and clearly because that shit we just that exchange we just had i'm not i'm sitting here thinking if that's even ever been exchanged in an interview that was a very powerful point Probably not, but 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 the reality is that the hip hop world is now allowing thirteen year old white kids to dictate the belief system of a black culture, and that's the problem. Is that is that white people labels are using black kids that they don't understand their life, but they're using them. And here's a euphemism that labels use urban yeah 
right? Urban is the euphemism for black. So when you yeah. go into a label, they'll say, oh, this is great for our urban audience and shit like that. And so, how white people get rhythmic is beyond me. They have well, to I'll change you, well, that. Well, 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 let me break it down to you. So, so here's how the race thing works at all these. Y'all shouldn't get urban, rhythmic. Urban, urban is black. This is a euphemism for black. Pop is a euphemism for white. Rhythmic is where we kind of hang out together. That's all. Oh, is that what that is? That's, that's all they're trying to say. That's what they're trying oh, to say. This is it doesn't why, feel so inclusive. Yeah, but this is, why, this is why Machine Gun Kelly goes number one at pop, but doesn't chart on urban, because it's, it's, radio is still race-related. You feel me? What, yeah. Radio is still like, I'm sorry, our urban audience isn't going to receive him. Everything is still race-related. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. So, uh, I don't know. I mean, my thing is just like... <laughs> Thank God I'm not pushing the record to radio. <laughs> nah, but my thing is just like, Woo! my thing is just like, I don't know, just have your fans, you know? Do you and have your fans and, and you supersede all the bullshit. Like, and that's the beautiful thing about being independent and owning your shit is that, you know, a lot of these plaques on this wall are off of my tune core and they're platinum and it had nothing, nothing got playlisted, nothing got radio. They're just, you know why they're platinum? Because I was me and I had a fan base and that's what it is. Now, people say, oh, well, it's because you're white, you know? That helps. For sure. And I agree. And the thing, the thing with being white in this sphere and space. Is it always helps. Being white, being white makes it way easier to reach the masses. But being yeah. white makes it way harder to reach hip hop. Because hip hop, hip hop is now, yeah, watch, right? Me... Go ahead. Marinate on it. It's not true. It is. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you. And I'm, let, me... let, let it be clear. I'm not playing this card of like, Give me sympathy, because not at all. I get it. White people steal everything. So no, hip-hop doesn't have to give me it. You feel me? I don't, I'm not looking for that. I'm not doing hip-hop music to, to get that. I'm doing it because I love it. Um, but hip-hop, uh, uh, the world makes it set up for white people to win. That's what's fucked up about it. Yeah. So, you, so you're white. You do music. Of course you'll excel, right? If, as long as you, you, know, you look kind of decent. The, yeah, because you reach... Yeah. Because the, cause the, cause the kid in fucking Belgium sees himself in you. Yes. He doesn't see himself in Young Thug. Yes. Right? But when it comes to hip-hop respect, you, you being... So it, 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 it's two-folded. But it, it, okay. You know, it's, the respect part. Yeah, the respect part. Just because it's like, which I, like... Like I said, that's not even a... It can't even be a point of conversation because it's just do. You feel me? But I also feel like that's not really race specific because to that hip hop part, yeah. if you whack, you whack. No, if you're whack, you're whack. But it also like if you're just look, bro. I've always said it's, it, it, it's hip hop is the most. If Eminem is not white, is he Pharaoh Munch? If Eminem is not white, is he Pharaoh Munch? I mean, you can't even say. But Eminem has even said in his own songs. Some, some white skin, blue eye. If I didn't have, I wouldn't have sell, sold as well. Him is aware. You know He's what I'm saying? He, he knows what's going on, well, and I know what's going on. Like, I, if someone said, well, you're selling so much because you're white, I would never be like, oh, you're bugging. <laughs> <laughs> I would be like, I agree, but I would also be like, that same thing that's making me sell well to the masses of white kids is the same thing that's keeping me from the outside of the conversation of hip-hop. As far as like, yo, who's really... Who's really putting on for hip hop and who's really rapping well and who's really making dope music and, 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 and preaching a good message when it comes to hip hop? There's not too many people pe preaching a better message yo, than I me agree, when yo, it comes to hip hop. Yo, this is, a, it's, this is so amazing, right? In my retirement, I get to talk to all of you people that I would have never spoken to, yeah. right? So I just, <laughs> so many artists have such similar stories and. Yeah. All all of us feel like uh, we'll never get the respect. Yeah. Well, that, that's a that's a running <laughs> common like, denominator, yeah. like a narrative. But like that's a necessary chip on the shoulder. But I also know like I also know like what I'm doing though. Like fuck my opinion. It's facts. Like what I'm doing is the first of its kind. There's never been an artist to even put out a debut album that I did. There's never been an artist to put out a platinum album in hip hop, produced, mixed, master, engineer, written solely by them ever in life, ever in life. In Wait, life. Say that again. So there has never slower. been an artist in hip hop, I won't even say music, so I'll just say in hip hop, to put out an album 100% solely produced by them, 
recorded by them. Just those two. Just those two has never happened, let alone I mixed it, I engineered it, I mastered it, and I wrote it. You know, okay. so. And these are facts. This is these not, are, these this are not facts. Your, no, no, no. This is not an opinion. Doing it and no, you putting your name no. On these, it. these are facts. I got put onto it. These are facts. Got it. So, I'm a legend by default. I was the first one to do what I did. So you have to let us say that. No, no. See, this is the problem. This is the problem, bro. This is the problem. That's how it's set up. No, I don't give a fuck if that's how it's set up. But this is the problem. I, I, I refuse to wait. I, I refuse to wait for someone else to crown me. How fucking dare y'all? Are you serious? You know, Star said that same thing to y'all me. Wanna, y'all want to crown... Nah, my, my problem with that is y'all want to crown bums. You know why? Because the hip-hop media moves off of the internet nowadays, but the internet is controlled by the 13-year-old white kid. So the hip-hop media, the pro-black hip-hop media that they think they're being pro-black is actually being influenced by 13-year-old white-run meme accounts. And so they're moving off of that, and they're, and, and they're basing their opinion off of what the internet is going crazy about. But the internet is going crazy about what the internet has been fed, and the internet is being fed by digital real estate, which is yes. white kids running meme accounts and, and bullshit and, and it's, it's just ridiculous. So and Digital real estate is much more intricate than just... I know, I know. Right. Well, I'm just, I'm just touching on it. it. Got yeah, it. but like, I'm saying something real. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm, like, I'm not waiting for y'all who wait for them to yeah, crown me. I understand. You're bugging. You, I should wait for you who is waiting for them to crown me. I get it. Are you fucking... Are you dumb? Are you serious? This album came out... 2017, May 5th. 2017. Oh, yeah, I remember, I remember this. Yes. You said, get the, I get, remember this. Get the fucking wolf shit out of here. I rem- yeah, I remember this. And then this I dissed album. you in Think Twice. Yes. But all, I only dissed you in the first line. The rest of the song is about another rapper. Listen, it was a great bar. This, it was a great bar. Man. It was a great bar. I love, I love this shit. It was, it was good. <laughs> That was like, even after you were like, it's a good song. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what, what are you saying? <laughs> what the fuck? Like, yeah, I think that's such a huge misconception I need to clear up. Like, when people diss me, I so enjoy it if it's good. If, if it's, it's good. good. If it's good. Yeah. Because uh, if it's not, you should be like, yo, it's trash. Look yeah, like, uh, you did that around that time. Some rap I never heard of dissed me to a uh, Wi Fi's funeral, I think his name is. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, these that? Kids. Yeah, okay. I know you're I don't know. But he dissed me, and the diss was pretty good. Yeah. So, I mean, that's how you learn. That's how you yeah. learn about shit. Go ahead. And I come from that. Do you want to say? I come from that. Do you want to say? I ain't think of your shit. what I do? No, that kid. Kid's a bum. Kid's well, a this bum. one song. No, no, well, no, that's no, what everybody no, said. No, 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 I'm not even talking about that. Oh. This, this, this is another one of these rappers who I've never met. Now, now, here's my thing, right? When we're all in the same league and the same thing. Hey, Frank, let me get my shit. We're all in the same league and the same thing. Why are, you, why are you just, why are you going out of your way to talk shit, you feel me? And uh, Nipsey said some real shit in the interview, he said, ba- paraphrasing, but he basically said like, you know, the media has people fucked up and people are doing goofy shit that they're going to have to pay for later on. 100%. Right? So Genius. This, this kid you're talking about is one of these rappers I've never met, don't know anyone. That, maybe I do know someone that knows you, it doesn't matter, but I never met you, I don't know you, and, and you're talking shit, Right? And it's kind of just one of those things where it's like, you're just, you're joining in on the like, oh, wait, we're all making fun of Russ? Okay, cool. Here's my joke, too. Oh, he said something, don't you? Yeah, but it's like, you don't realize that, you know, there's consequences for that. You feel me? So. Let me be the first person to tell you, nobody watching none of my shit gives two fucks about Wi-Fi's funeral. I don't, I'm not even talking about that. I'm just saying that, like, I don't, I don't also appreciate the fact, like, I, was I saying it outside? Was I saying it on camera? How people, I take it as offensive as, oh no, I was saying it on Ebro earlier. Um, when people. Hi, Ebro. When Joe Schmo of Nebraska says, fuck Russ, he's a loser, I don't give a shit. You don't have enough of an army to mobilize to tear down the castle I built, right? Now, when you're an artist, when you're this, when you have a platform and you have an army that follows your word mm. by law, and you use your platform to negatively irresponsibly. throw... Irresponsibly. Yeah, irresponsibly. And you use it to tear down what I've done, which means I'm the only one around me making money doing my thing. So I'm, you're tearing down my family and friends, everything. I take it as offensive as it is. And so when you use your platform to cast negative stones at my house that I built, I take it as offensive as it is. And so 
if you want to try and parlay it into, oh, well, I was joking, that's nice. Didn't take it as that. And so... I don't play that joking line either. At all. So at that point, and, and, and I hate the narrative don't of like... Don't joke with me like that. I hate the narrative, and, and since we're already here, I hate the narrative of, oh, uh, Russ got people beat up. It's like... Ah, oh, they did say that. But it's like, oh, but yeah, realistically... You're fucking going realistically, it around. Nah, but realistically, it was at a festival in Germany that I was at. I, saw, I, I talked to him, Smoke Perp. I talked to Smoke Perp. He was shooting a Hard Knock TV interview, whatever. I talked to him before, before that shit happened. I gave him a chance because I was like, yo, I'm not trying to go all the way there, but my homies are my homies. You feel me? So I talked to you and I say, I say, I say, yo, what was up with all that shit you were talking online? I'm, I'm really trying to have a conversation. Who were you with? I was with who I moved. Everyone in this house I was with. But that's like my real friends since I was 12. So it's not like it's some higher shit. I've been with them since I was in middle school. They look like some people who have gotten us into some altercations once oh, or twice. Oh, that's judgmental. It is. That's judgmental. That's fucked up. Yeah. So. I'm sorry, you guys. Yeah. But, so, I said, yo, what's up with all that shit you were talking online? And then, you know, shout out to, shout out to him. He said, fuck you me. Bucked up. But I mean, and then that was that. You feel me? But it's not like, I don't understand this world we live in, right? Here's, here's the problem I have with that whole thing. We can't live in a world where we glamorize lyrics that uh, romanticize, I got shooters on deck, don't do shit if I say so. All these things that imply that I'm too much of a boss to touch you, I got shooter, I got people, I got... But then when it actually happens in real life, no, you and, pussy. and you don't see me on camera, all of a sudden, um, oh, what, you can't run the fate? Fade yourself. Bro, do you think this is high school? Stop rapping these lyrics then. Stop rapping these fucking lyrics of, oh, my favorite rappers got shooters, my favorite rappers got... Nah, stop rapping these lyrics then. Because the second that it actually comes to real life and motherfuckers got washed because of what the fuck they were talking about, then, like, then rap the lyrics now for real. Now rap the lyrics. But you can't do this fucking gimmick of, oh... Don't wipe you down if I say so. Fuck with the mob. I got ties, all this shit. And it's like, oh, but then when it actually happens, it's like, yeah, but Drake, you should have run that fade yourself. It's like, yo, come on. What are you talking about? Well, I'm for, I'm for peace for Me all. Me too. But like at the end of the day, bro, at I the end of the I day, don't. you can't poke like, and, and, and I'm not even trying to, and I know that this is going to come and be something in the internet and there's going to be responses, whatever. But um, I had a conversation with, 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 with all the people involved with this, you know, with Smoke Park, with Adam, and, and we're cool, but I'm telling my truth, and if they have a problem with it, they have a problem with it, but I'm telling my truth, but... Who's Adam? Uh, Adam22, the blogger, but... What did, he, what did he have to do with that? Uh, nothing with the Smoke Perp shit, but... Oh, yeah, got it. You were just, you were using your platform irresponsibly. Adam. Yeah, so... Got it. I mean, I just, you know, I don't Hi, live in, I don't, I don't live in a world where if you're 15 and you're talking shit and you're surprised that you get confronted about it, then okay, but you're a grown ass man. If you're talking shit about another grown ass man, you're using your platform. Like I said, you're mobilizing your army and you're using your platform to negatively throw stones in my castle. If you get confronted about it, whether it be me or anyone else, there should be zero surprise in your head. If there is a surprise that, oh my God, wait, there's ramifications for my actions? Then yeah. where were you raised? Where were you raised? You think you can, and the problem is you think it, you judge the book by its cover because you would not be talking like that to 21 Savage or to Gucci, you know? But you think because I'd be singing love songs that your girl be fucking to and, and I'm white that it's like, oh, nah, we're good. We could probably talk shit about him. It's all good. And it's just, it's whatever. But it, it, it pissed me off to the point that everyone has a threshold. And so, sorry, like, you don't not think, gonna happen. You don't, you don't think you got too many things that piss you off for you to be this wealthy? Uh, I'm just in tune still, you know? I'm in tune still. I'm in tune, and that's what makes me able to create what I create, is because I'm in tune. I got a couple of dollars, and I'm pissed off at stuff, too. Yeah. It don't matter. Yeah, it's understand. what it is. It's like, because here's the, here's the dilemma is that, oh, when you get, it should be money above everything, and money should cure everything. It's like, all right, well, <laughs> and it's an insane narrative that the consumer, Man. and here's how you know the consumer is confused, because the consumer tells you, you got too much money and you're too successful to be arguing with these people and to be doing this. But then they also say, 
you're no better than us. You're with, and it's like, well, you, y'all got to pick. Because if I'm no better than you and I'm just like you, then I would respond because you guys respond to three mean people in your school saying something. So if I'm just like you, then I would respond. But if I'm not just like you, then I'm going to get money, show my mansion and say, suck my dick. So y'all got to pick a side of the fence. Either, either you accept as a consumer, I'm nothing like See, you. See, but that, that, no, and that's the thing about consumerism, Russ. No, they don't have to pick a side of the fence. They can bounce back and forth. Yeah. They can like you one day. It's true. Hate you the next day. Yeah. They can. You know what you got to do as an artist? Remain you and let the chips fall where they may. Yeah. It's some bullshit. But yeah. And that's it. And that's why, like, you know what? Everything I've done, I stand by. You know what I'm saying? Like, I never, you can't, you can't, um, I never poked at anybody. I I just became the butt of the joke. And I'm not trying to play some victim shit. Well, what year do you think that happened? uh, September 2017. September 2017, because I wore a shirt at a uh, day and night festival in California that said, uh, how much Zans and Lean do you have to do before you realize you're a fucking loser, right? Um, Aggressive message, but I understand. Hilarious in my opinion. I was also only talking to white suburban kids who run the internet, and I'm talking to them as far as like, you guys wanna be these artists you look up to so much, but they have real pain. And you're just like, my parents don't get me, so you do his annex. I understand. And now you're addicted, and now you think you're a part of hip hop culture, because you think that that's what it means to be black. And that that's been, the problem. That wouldn't have been the coolest shirt. <laughs> Writing all of that. At all. So I say that and then people, oh, you're making, you're making a mockery of junkies and addicts. It's like. Well, that's, that, that's, how, that, that's how it read to me for a second. You know what, though, you bro? You know what, though? You know what, though, bro? People have been made a mockery for less. You feel me? And I that's wasn't true. even talking about y'all. That's true. But since y'all want to, like, bring it on yourself. You act like you act like you woke up. Now, for the people who you were born into the life and you had no choice, whatever, I feel for you. I do. I understand that I don't understand. But for the rest of y'all that took it on yourself to self-inflict and, and, and to try this shit out because you don't have uh, uh, do you think that, do you mental think that, wherewithal to be like, you know what, I'm not going to try it. Do you think that self-infliction is a part of that? I think it's a part of pain. I think, I, think it's, I think it's people are trying to escape the pain. And I think that they don't have a lot of choices around them. I think they think it's either death, drugs, or then that's usually probably it, um, which is why the shit is so fucked up. But, you know, I'm either talking to you or I'm not. And if you put the shoe on, then I was talking to you. So I wasn't talking to anyone, but people try and attribute that T-shirt to little Pete dying. And if anyone did, like the Columbia thing, if anyone did any five, because people say, you put up that shirt right after Lil Pete died, you're trash. Okay. If anyone did any five seconds of research, they would see that I put up, I wore that t-shirt months before he passed away. Mm-hmm. So it's just literally like, you're just a sheep. You are literally just moving with, the world told you that Russ made a shirt after Lil Peep died, and you are just moving with that because you're an idiot. And so I don't want you listening to my music. I don't care. I don't need you. Forbes list, Staples Center sold out. You're an idiot. Go play around and be 15-year-old Devin from Alabama and listen to Lil Pump and be an idiot. I don't give a fuck. Y'all fuck your cousins. I don't give a fuck what you're talking about. You know what I'm See, saying? You know what are what? you talking about? It's insane. You know no what? offense to Alabama. <laughs> but like, what are you talking about? At some point, like Nipsey says in his interviews, you have to validate your opinion. Why do we give a fuck about what... Uh, Dale from Bumblefuck, Mississippi has to say about what the fuck I'm talking about, bro. Mississippi live podcast coming your way. But it's like, I'm not trying to talk shit on Mississippi (laughs) or Alabama, but I'm just saying it's like, why should we, why why is your, I said this, I said that line in a a song I got with YK, YK Osiris, and I said, uh, 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 y'all can't stop it with your power facade, the audacity to think that you're bigger than God. It's like, why do you think that because you, fuck where you're from. Let's say it's LA. You're hip, you're cool, you're in the scene. Why do you think that your opinion of me stops anything? That audacity is offensive. You're an idiot. You're an idiot and, you, and you're disrespectful to think that my 10 plus years of hard work is gonna be curtailed by your one week old, I saw it on my timeline and I hate you, 
Suck my dick, bro. You're still scared of yourself. What the fuck are you talking about? Eh, nothing's gonna be curtailed. <laughs> insane? Like, what are you talking about? It's insane. Like, bro, you're still trying to figure out how to, like, how should I slide into this girl's DMs and ask her for martinis? Bro, you're a bum. What are you talking about to me? <laughs> so there's really a wolf. Yes. Comes out. May 5th, 2017. And clearly does well. Does well, yes. And then I start seeing clips. Mm -hmm. Around this time is when I start seeing clips of you performing. Yeah. This is while I'm still of the impression that you are a plant. Sure. And your dad works where he works and Insane. whatever. Yes. So now I'm seeing the shows. Yes. Can't, can't fake can't bodies. Fake this. Can't fake bodies. Can't so fake. So I'd be telling people. This one you can't fake. I yeah. mean. Oh, you, I, I, I've been seeing comments where people are trying to like, he bought them. You can't. <laughs> it's like, how can people? <laughs> Listen, I am as cynical as they come. Yeah. You can't. It yeah. is not possible to do. They have not figured that part out. Yeah. So sometimes I'm seeing this shit and I'm like, all right, um, well, these new niggas is festival niggas, so they're just going to be performing in front yeah. of a whole bunch of people. Yeah. But. Yeah. And, and see, I want to get into that, too. I think there's also a, uh, it's a perception play, bro. Like, when you see on your Explore page, so-and-so artists had everyone in the world at his festival because they, you know, they paid the blog pages, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a festival, though. They were there regardless if you were there or not. Exactly. It's a soft ticket. That ain't a hard ticket for you. That's, a, that's the difference between soft ticket and hard ticket. So my whole thing is it's hard tickets over clubs, over festivals. Like Y'all might get booked for a festival that regardless of you showing up at 50,000 people there, but you post it on your gram and you try and make it seem like, yo, I'm dumb popping. It's, look. it's like, you're not popping. The festival's popping. You're yeah. not popping. Yeah. You're a worker. Yeah, exactly. You're a worker. You're a yeah. hired worker. None of those tickets mean anything for you. At all. But when, you're, when I went to Portugal for my first time ever and did 13,000 people in an arena, no openers. And people will try to say, oh, well, you paid for, I paid for motherfuckers to know my song? I don't, what are y'all talking about? But was this your first time in Portugal? My first time ever in Portugal, I did the Altice Arena, 13,000 people sold out. But all right, so stop. So walk me through that as someone who has never experienced that. Yeah. You go to Portugal, yes. your first time. See, I'm Ever. from the era of people building up to that. Well, you had to do audience. the grassroots. Well, so now the yeah. grassroots went from street teams and posters. It went from that to uh, you put your music on the internet. And J. Cole has this really amazing clip, like an old interview where he says, put it on the internet, and if it's good enough, your fans will sniff you out. And I still live by that, where it's just yeah, like... I used to, too. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't go out of my way to find Portugal. I just put up my... I just put out the music and but, but did you look at some did you look at some data that now said, I know analytics though too here we go right but I didn't I didn't feed into the end by the time I saw the analytics it was on it was on and I always have the conversation with my homies I'm always like why do y'all think like even like Brazil like I'm like why do y'all think Brazil just like loves the music more like because then you start getting into the psyche of the country and the city and the people because I'm always I'm always like why do I do 13,000 people in LA? Now, granted, it's a lot of people in California, but so well, fuck a, them. Why do I do 13,000 people in Portugal, but I don't do 13,000 people in Spain? It's yeah. the psyche of the people. It's, it's, it's one of those things, bro, where like you put out the music and, and whoever connects to it connects to it, and your fan base, your fan base finds you. So I move, that's how I was successful with touring. I moved off of what they were moving off of, and even with singles. I didn't pick singles. I would put out songs and fans and they would, picked them. that's it. And so I never picked anything. That's why I was successful because I wasn't, I was in charge of my success, but at the same time, I let the fans be in charge of the success. That's the other clip that, that caught me off guard a little bit. Yeah. That's tough. No, I don't care how many people's in LA. You're not from LA. At all. Your music ain't at LA. All. At all. And see, that's when I was like, damn, is this, is this cause he's white? Is this where the white factor comes I, into play? Can I get, can I get, can I get, I don't want to get emotional, but can I get real for a second? Of course, I've please. been real this whole time. Please. But, um, I get very caught up in what I don't have. I get very caught up in, I like 13,000, but I want 26. And I get very caught up in I'm platinum, but I want double. Um, but, when I take a step back, and people need to understand for context, 
my present day life is a culmination of me in the past thinking about the future. Because my me in the past thinking about the future is my present now, and so. I'm constantly robbing myself of the present moment because I'm so focused on the future. But so, when I take a step back though, man, I'm like, this is, you let the media tell it, you let the world tell it, like, because we're so driven by the media and the internet now. You let them tell it. Academics said it one time, like, you would think that Russ has rocks thrown at him and there's 50 people there, but it's like, yeah. that's why walking out... Staples Center. That made him respect you too, honestly. Staples Center, bro. I remember talking to that. Staples Center, and you walk out, and it's, and it's what it is. It's um, the reason why, unbiased, honestly unbiased, the reason why, third party, Russ's fans are the illest fans is because they're not Russ, so they have the peer pressure of the... You know, they're 15, they're 16, they're 18, they're 19, they're 20, whatever they are. But they have the peer pressure of their friends saying, you listen to him. He's a meme. He's a L. L. And y'all still be like, y'all fuck with me so hard that you defeat peer pressure. You know? Because a lot of people, if your friends say he's whack, then he's whack. And that's what it is. You don't question that. You're just like, a lot of 15, come on, 15, 16. I'm laughing because it's it, it's true. Fifteen, sixteen. A lot of a lot of y'all move off of what your friends move off of. So if your friend group says, "Well, he's whack," fuck that. You might really fuck with them, but you might you might get convinced to be like. And I've had. I only say this because number one, I was fifteen or sixteen at one point. And number two, I get hit up all the time where it's, man, I was sleeping or motherfuckers try to convince me to hate you, but once I finally listened to you, it was dope. Da, 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 da. And I just have, I have such an admiration for my fan base, a genuine admiration, bro, because it's like, y'all, y'all have, y'all have been given every reason to not fuck with me, right? The internet has given you every reason to not fuck with yeah. me, so the fact yeah. that you still show up. That's how I feel about my base. That's what I'm saying. That's why it's real. The fact that y'all still show up, it just means that I'm here forever because y'all have tried to throw everything against me, bro. And so, Is that, wait, let me know. That was a segment for the fans. I love y'all forever. Period. But the part that, uh, you know, I'm sitting here smiling while you say that. Yeah. Because, uh, number one, I identify with it. Like, yeah. I've, I've been hated for a long time. Yes. But somewhere in the middle of that, I was like, holy shit, there's a value to that. Like there, there is. There is. They're still typing my name. Yeah. Well. They're still memeing. You know. Yes. They think they think it's bad what they're doing. Somehow there was maybe I, I keep it. I'll be all the way transparent. There might have been a three to four year stretch yeah. where just hate carried me until I figured out the next idea. Yeah. yeah. And then when I had it, it was like, oh, my name is still here because you guys have been typing it with pumping up jokes for five years. Thank yes. you. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. So I understand. I get that. You know what I want to do. You know what I want to do? What do you want to do? Because you'll relate to this. You'll relate to this. Because I, I feel the exact same way, but I could, I could uh, show better than tell. You feel me? This is, this is I just want to play a, 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 a thing. Mark this. It's a clearance spot. Off this. It's my song. It's all good. And I play right promoter, here. getting great exposure from all the hate. Y'all are hustling backwards. This goes for anybody and any that's it. Ass rapper, pussy. Y'all are hustling backwards. I'm getting great exposure from all the hate. Y'all are hustling backwards. See, to me, to me, right? If you hate me, you know your best way to defeat me if you hate me? Ignore me. Yeah. You're an idiot if you think that by hating me, you should promote me. You know, most of the people that I've had some sort of, it's not beef or friction, but uh, yeah. misunderstanding with, mm -hmm. later on we've developed like some really amazing relationships. And I like yeah. that yin yang. I like that both sides of the spectrum. Yeah, that it started from something. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm I'm going I'm to clash with some niggas, man. I, I'll yeah. tell you, I'm, I ain't going to be the okay. most friendliest with just people. Sure. That's It's never been. It's never been me. Yeah. But I respect 
certain shit in this artistry world Same. that yeah. we live in. So if you just maneuvering through it with some type of integrity and grace and you stand for something and you just won't be bamboozled by the yeah. powers that be, like that's attractive. Yeah. Yeah. And that that energy, it 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 lures me. That's why I'm so grateful for the fact that like I don't even I don't sit with I don't even do this with people. No, I know. Yeah. It's so great that I have that option. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah, yeah. I look yeah. at an interview with niggas and be like, yeah, you don't want to talk to him. <laughs> this guy's not saying a fucking word at over. all. You hate him. Yeah. Why are you you don't have to do this? Right. Why are you talk what, what are yeah. y'all talking about? Y'all not talking about a fucking nothing. thing. I've learned nothing from this interview and it's contributed nothing to the spirit of hip hop. But yeah. that's how yeah. I feel. Yeah. About that's how I feel too. Shit. No, but that's why like even with me, bro, it's like I don't wanna I just said earlier, I don't want to waste my conversations because I know I'm not just out here talking. So I'm not going to waste my conversations with people. It's like, if I'm going to talk and it's going to be on camera, it's got to be, it, it, it's a thing, you know? Because I know I'm not just bullshitting. I have the luxury of being 26. There's also a, there's a caveat to this whole come up that is, I didn't blow up till 23, 24. A lot of these kids are blowing up at 18, 19. Mm -hmm. And so if I would have blown up at 18 or 19, I would have been a mess probably too, you know? Just it's funny you say that. In my day, um, we used to complain about being shelved, right? Yes. And I didn't get shelved. And a lot of artists, when I got my deal, they were the artists that were already signed, they were angry at me yeah. because I got signed and yeah. I didn't get shelved. Right. I was ready to go. But listening to you now, yeah. and if I even speak to some of those artists, I'm sure they would say that shelf might have been a good thing yeah. Yeah. at the time to just yeah. watch. It's indirect development at that point. Yes, yeah. it, exactly. Yeah. Do, you think that, do you think that the artistry today suffers because there's no shelf I think, yes. artist development, yeah. attention paid to... I know. think the artistry suffers because the world sees you on training wheels. And judges you that way. Well, yeah. So I think that I think that there is some sort of there's value to fans watching you go from here to here, from A to Z and it's beautiful and it's like, "Oh, we've been with you since day 1." That's fine as long as at A you were the same as Z, you've just you're a better version of A. Yeah. When it starts to fuck up to me and I've been I'm a fan, I'm a consumer too. Uh, when it fucks up to me is when I fell in love with A. And you do a different version of A now because all of a sudden now you've, you know, the, the, the rapper who only raps and then three albums in wants to sing to me. And I'm just like, okay, as an artist, I'm glad you're experimenting. But as a consumer of this version of you, I'm having a hard time buying into this because why are you riding on training wheels at, you know, at this stage in the game? You should have, you should have mastered that part of your craft. That's why, to me, it was very important for me to, to master, to a certain level, certain parts of my craft. Like, I came into the game, uh, I had the melodies on lock, I had the raps on lock, and the beats on lock. Now, could they be better? Could they be... Sure, but I had it good enough. In your toolbox. Yeah, I had it good enough where I, was, I could compete. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? Like, my left hand was nice enough, and my right hand was nice enough, my jump shot was nice enough to compete in the league. Now, could it be better? Yeah, but it was nice enough to compete. I don't understand people who try and get into a league and want to be Kyle Korver. No offense to Kyle Korver. He's a great shooter, but why would you only want to shoot threes? You know what I'm saying? Like you, Oh, so you, you just do hooks? That's it. That's your thing. You don't, do, you don't even do the beats. You don't do verses. Like we just tune in for your hooks. And it's like, it's very one-dimensional to me. And it's just, it, it, it's... What if you lose every number on your phone? Who you gonna call? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just, you know, <laughs> me, me saying produce, mix, whatever, it comes off arrogant, but it comes from a place of self-sufficiency where it's like... Most of the things you say come, comes off arrogant. Sure, and, and, and you know what? And I own that, and, and I've come to accept that because the reality is that... Uh, If your light was shining so bright, then 
my light wouldn't interrupt with your eyes. You feel me? So me shining my light shouldn't fuck with you. Like, I just know, like, Kobe isn't mad at Floyd, you know? No, he's not. He's not. And no, no winner is mad at Floyd. People who are mad at Floyd are people who are still boxing in their local gyms that think they're better than him. And so they get angry. But winners are not mad at winners. There's nobody on the Forbes list that has ever criticized me, ever. And I don't find that uh, convenient. That's, I find pretty, that, that's saucy to even say. I, yeah, but I find that very telling of criticism in and of itself. People criticize what they actually want to be a part of, you know? Like, people talk shit. Rappers have talked shit about me. But I don't know for a fact, since we're in the same league, we're in the same game. No, we're not. But let's say for conversation's sake. All, every rapper who's ever talked shit about me would love to be on the Forbes list off of their music and would love to sell out Staples Center off of their music. So you want my life. So why are you mad at it? I didn't talk shit about you. Why are you mad at it, you know? And you're mad at it because, it, what, I didn't follow a traditional sense. I didn't buddy yes. up with rappers. Yes. And, 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 and yeah, and, this, and I've said this in a song. I said, could have played this all different. Uh, some, some, whatever. But could have buddied up with rappers for the sake of being cool, but it's not aiming to be fake. You know what I'm saying? Like, paraphrasing, but it's just... It's not in me to go into the club in L.A. and take a picture with the most buzzing hook artist and say, my brother, and post it on Instagram. And, and then a month later, be surprised when he does unbrotherly type of things. I'm 26. That's the benefit of, 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 of getting on at 23. I lived normal years. I did middle school. I did high school. And I did college years, all broken normal. So, and two years after college years, right, as normal. Because you graduate college when you're, what, 21, 22? I didn't get on until 23, 24, so. I thought some of y'all were paying to get on the Forbes list. No. Well, I wish you could do that. I would do that every year if you could. I could they, took, they took money off of my shit, but. Well, they're going to. Well, because they, they take expenses off of your tours. Mm. So if you say I made, so if you say I grossed 20 million on tour, they're just going to take some shit off the top for expenses, which is fair. But um, no, it's just, uh, it's just like, I don't know. I feel, like, I feel like I've laid out a blueprint and I feel like I've tried to encourage artists. Now, is the how rough? Is the approach rough? Sure. But I'm also talking to hip hop artists who are supposed to be pretty thorough, pretty, pretty, uh, pretty, pretty rough around the edges. That's judgmental. Well, you know what? Then don't put it out there like that. Then don't put out to the world that you are this hardened individual if you can't handle someone else winning. If you can't handle me winning and telling the world that I'm winning without you getting offended, I question if you are as fucking real and as hard as you say you are. Here's because it. guess what? Have I ever, have I, go find, go find anything about me commenting in, in a negative aspect on someone winning more than me. It's never happened in life and it never will. Why? Because I'm Kobe and they're Floyd. And if you win, I win. I'm not offended by someone winning because I'm winning. I have a question for Kobe. Mm -hmm. Do you think you could continue to win? Yeah. Without the fuel from yeah. the people that doubt you? I've, I've been asked that before. It's like the chip on the shoulder mentality. And I think that Cause you got, I'll be honest with you, bro. Yeah. You got a lot of money, and you, a lot of your focus, yeah, is there. Yeah. And I'm wondering if, if that's out of necessity. As far as my focus, explain that. The the chip, back to the chip, back to the chip on the shoulder. The fuel of yeah. you know normally when like you said. Yeah. Kobe's not mad at Floyd when right. people are winning. Right, right, right. You know the Forbes list. That's a feat not many people get. Sure. Most people would think. Yeah. Once that happens. Yeah. Nothing yeah. else matters. We're here. Well, you know what? You know what? It honestly, comes from, and this will probably sound arrogant. Not even. <laughs> no, honestly, this is probably the opposite, which is why they won't believe it because they think I'm arrogant. Oh. Uh, I assume, which I, I stopped assuming this, but 
I guess I always, because I always knew my intention, I guess I always assumed that people would see my success. When I say people, I mean artists, as inspiration. And so that's why I think I took so much offense when artists were talking shit. Because I'm like, bro, like, I'm, I'm out here, like, I'm out here doing something that none of us have done yet. And I'm out here parading for ownership. And I'm out here parading for... The good shit. The good stuff. The, the right shit that thing. makes y'all... Like, the shit that all of y'all would be happy about. And you just want to... You just want to watch 13-year-old white kids throw tomatoes. And because you're so not even in... You're, not, you're so not yourself yet because you're young that you just join in on them and you throw tomatoes too. I'm just like... But it's no surprise that why you don't make the Forbes list. And, and, and I shouldn't have to say that. You, you see what I'm saying? Like, the fact that everyone who made the Forbes list last year, none of them have ever publicly said anything. Now, maybe they don't like me, whatever, but publicly they they've never used it. their platform to do that. The, the fact that the only people in hip hop, whether it's a producer or whatever, have been people who are, uh, I guess from a metric standpoint, less successful than me, is a little telling, you know? Like, me and Snoop are cool. Me and Meek are cool. Uh, me, and, me and John Mayer are cool. Me and Scott Swartz are cool. Me and Swiss Beats are cool. Me and Timbaland. I don't think it's fair that you get to- No, but I'm saying, but, but it's like, I don't look up Wait to- a second, goddammit. I don't know if it's fair that you get, I don't know it's, if it's fair that you get to say that about the people who are less successful from a metric standpoint, because you're not based in metrics. You have them, and they help any argument that you would like to have. But when I'm, when I'm talking to you outside and your music is on, yeah. you're not talking to me about what you plan to do with numbers. Yeah. You're talking to me about the sounds that yeah. you're using yeah. and the sonics yeah. of things. Yeah. So you're not really rooted in that. I'm not. I'm not. And that's why, like, and that's what's crazy. You're so right, because that's what's crazy to me is that I'm you not, have it there as a rebuttal. As a rebuttal. You're right. You're right. The numbers are there as context to what I'm trying to it's tell fact. you. It's fact. It's yeah, fact so like Exactly. You can't so, argue with this. You're 100%. You're 100% I'm so glad you said it like that because it's better than I could have said it. But you're right. It's a rebuttal and it's a context. Because when I'm talking in an interview or when I'm saying whatever, the context is this wall. Yes. The context is that like I'm not just... No offense, but I'm not just uh, Trinidad James talking to y'all. Like this is literally someone who, who is is operating at one of the higher levels of this music business shit. And you know what? I'm not. And I'm not even. And I shout out to James, Trinidad I, James. He let me. Yo, he let me on stage. did it a different way. He listen. It just did, uh, wasn't sustainable that way. That's it. And I want to. And I want to say shout out to Trinidad James. I'll never forget when we were in Athens, Georgia. And all gold just came out, and I was on stage drunk as shit at 17. So I always fuck with Trinidad for that. But I'm talking about when you remove the personal element from it, like, I'm not just talking from a trying to get it standpoint. I'm talking from a place where it's like, if I wanted to, I could hang it up, you know? So it's like, I'm talking from a place of like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to give y'all game from the other side of it. And what if they don't take it? They haven't took it, and that's fine. But the ones who do, the ones who do, then they take it. But you know what? You know what, bro? Honestly, you can't force the message on people. You can't force it, and and that's why, honestly, I'm more. Once I realized that, and I'm still realizing it. I'm still coming to terms with it that hip hop isn't trying to hear the message right now. Right now, right now, they might hear it in five years. Might they might change. They'll definitely hear it might when change. I'm dead. They might not hear it right now, but you know what? I got family. I got friends. My family's inspired. And my friends are inspired to be entrepreneurs. My friends and family are inspired to go get it. So you know what? So be it. Y'all will catch on when you catch on, but just keep in mind, I'm Game of Thrones, and I didn't start watching Game of Thrones till April of this year. So I caught on season eight, right? So just keep in mind that regardless of you, and whenever you want to catch on to my TV show, when you catch on, it's a real fan base over here. So it doesn't really matter if you catch on now or, or, or not. With or without your involved, wh- who said it? With or without your involved, man, I'm coming for all of it. Respect my conglomerate. What is that? Buster Rhymes? Fat Joe? 
Jay-Z, yeah, it's like, fuck y'all. It doesn't matter, bro. Like, it'd be one thing if we were sitting here and I was in an apartment, I was, I was struggling, I was like, man, I need the world to fuck with me. Bro, you're, you're, you're talking to someone who, who, from a corporate level, has access to the corner office. And, I mean, this is Forbes list, arena selling, multi-platinum shit. So, fuck, I shouldn't even have to say that, but that's what this is. So, with or without your involvement, this is where the train is going. So, the audacity to think that your opinion has enough sway no, to move this shit is That's insane. where the train is. Yes. By, yes. Your, by your own admittance, you can have 20 million yes. and want 40. True. You it's can, a lack of being able to be sell. content. Yeah. So, so when you talk about where the train is going, because that is what you just said. Yeah. Tell me what that looks like through your eyes. I want to ask you a question because I think you probably feel the same way. Tell me. Because I have a problem with this. Do you have a problem? When I say problem, I mean it's hard to, to do this thing, to be content. I'm not ever content. Me neither. You know why? Never. You know why? I feel, and I know this is a flaw of mine, I feel like being content, it sleeps a little too close to complacency. Yeah, I'm not with it. Yeah, me neither. I don't, so now. I'm a have not. I remember. Yeah. Now, I know, I'm also aware enough to know that I've robbed myself uh, 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 of the present. Because as, as much as this wall is amazing in this house and this life or whatever, um, I'm also very aware that I want more. And I think we, we talked about it outside. Of, did we talk about it here where it's like, I wish I would have just been like, I wish I would have appreciated the time off yeah. more than I did. 100%. I even I have songs. I, I have songs. But that's why music is so important and, and, and my catalog is so important to me because it's therapy to me because my journey is, is, is documented. So I have songs where I say, I have a song called I'm Gonna Make You Love Me. That's the song. And I sampled... I'm gonna make you love me. It's like a, it's a soul sample. And I'm saying appreciating anonymity, walking through the airport unnoticed, that'll be a real fly memory. And it's like, I remember writing that and rapping that. And it's like, I was rapping it, feeling it, but I, there was no way for me to feel it as much as I feel that now. Of course. Cause now I'm like, man, yeah, mm -hmm. that's real, <laughs> you know? And uh, yeah, I just, five years from now, 10 years from now, um, as opposed to being like, here's how I know I've grown. Because when you say, what do you see five years from now? As opposed to saying, I see 30 Grammys and I see um, just happiness, success. So the, I see happiness, but more so what I want five, five years from now is I want, I want appreciation. I want, I, want to, I want to absolutely live in what's been done. And this is the beautiful thing about artists and speaking to them. Yeah. You want appreciation. Yeah. And with all of From the, myself, not from I the know, world, from myself, yeah. I know, but what does it look like? Honestly, bro. You don't know. No, but you know what's, you know what's interesting about... No, I'm not going to say you know what's interesting about me, but because maybe it's not that You're interesting. interesting, period. Yeah, but this is... You I'm, need a podcast. I'm simple. I know. You need a podcast. We'll talk about it one yeah. day. Yeah, but this... This is it, bro. My mom had to convince me to, to buy a car. I was driving my 97 Nissan Pathfinder when I made $11 million in a year because I kept saying, why do I need a car? This, it's fine. This car drives fine. You know, even with this house, I'm not, five years from now, what does it look like? You know what it looks like? It looks like this. I'm living in this house, and maybe, you know what? Everyone around me, though, we're all in Bentleys, maybe, and, and, and everyone's got a beach house, and, and, and we travel more luxurious. But what does it look like? It's about this, you know? I want to hear about the, the new TV show that I've heard some of. I don't know what I'm allowed to say and not say yes. You can say whatever you want to say. 
It sounded good songs. Thank you. It sounded like good songs. Thank you. Sounds like you are in the process still. Yeah. Figuring it out, putting it together. Yeah. But it doesn't, and, and I'm not so familiar with your catalog, of course. No, but no, no, no. Those songs sound different from some songs that I've heard. I'm sure the, they do. Yeah. yeah. Is that purpose, purpose, purposely done? Um, I think the I think the uh, greater versions of me. I feel like they're uh, improved versions of myself. That's what I try and do. So if I'm 2.0 right now, I hope those are 3.0. Got it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Uh, but yeah, you're right. Like that song I played with Rick Ross. We'll say it on camera. Uh, it was hard. It was hard. Thank you. That was that to me. And I know, like you said, oh, I don't know your catalog. I know my whole catalog. That to me is is like your best work. Some of your best work. Yeah. Period. Good. So, Got it. Uh, yeah, I'm glad you feel like that because to me, I feel like that about my own shit. So when would you like to? When would you like to come? With uh, I, 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 I'm going back to letting the people pick. I'm not. I'm not. You let them pick the date. Yeah, well, I'm not pick a date, but I'm just not moving off of the industry standard and structure. Yeah, just like you put out the singles, then they, then the album comes out. It's like, it's like, nah. My whole career has been based off of me basing it off of the fans. That's why I won. I won because I didn't choose. I won because the fans chose. I didn't pick singles. You know, like you don't put out 96 songs and four of them become multi platinum, and then there's couple others that are gold, et cetera. You don't do that if instead of putting out 96 songs, you only put out Losing Control, Pull the Trigger, What They Want to Do With Myself, and that's it. So you put out four songs instead of 96. No, you got to put out 96 to find the four. To see the four. Right? And, and, four. and you got to put out 96 to let the world choose the four. Because I was putting out a song a week. Losing Control was just one of the 96. It wasn't like I put extra spotlight on it. It was just one of the many, you know? It ends up going, it's about to be, by the time this comes out, it's probably quadruple platinum. What they want just went triple platinum today. A lot of these plaques are, fuck the songs. Like, people don't understand that. When they see a, a Boogie get a plaque or a Tiger get a plaque or whatever, they're just like, Tiger gets a plaque. A Boogie gets a plaque. But they don't understand that there's a lot that goes into the plaque. And I know what goes into the plaque because I'm doing everything that goes into the plaque. So I'm sitting here and I'm like, man, this platinum record, this platinum plaque doesn't mean that the song is so great. It does. But I take it, I take it more deeper than, that. deeper than that. I'm like, man, that means that my hi-hats are ill. That means that my delay on my vocals that I put are ill. That means the reverb I threw on this echo. It means that everything I did sonically was ill. That's why I'm not hearing nothing about nothing when it comes to this music shit. It'd be one thing if all these plaques on the wall were attributed to someone else's genius. Majority of these, this is my genius. You feel me? Like, these are my vocal effects. These are my reverb, yeah, my delay. You're giving me the greatest endings to the interview, and then you go back into the plaques. Well, we were just starting to talk about the plaques. Why are we ending the interview? Because I'm going to fuck out of here. Well, that's fair. <laughs> Who the fuck is this? Exactly. This is why you got to get out of here. No, not at all. I'm getting out of here because I want to I, I see your studio. Yes. You live mad far from where I am. Where are you at? I don't know, but it was about an hour. Well, that, you should ask. You should talk to your people. You shouldn't be an hour away. Who, 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 where's Ian? It was an hour. Ian, where, where y'all at? Oh, oh, listen. Now you're oh, in Buckhead? Yeah. You're not an hour away. Shit. Oh, because you try to come up here at fourth. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. My fault. Let me clarify for camera. He's not an hour away. He tried to drive up from the city to the north side of Atlanta at 4.30 in the afternoon. At the time that we scheduled. Thank you. Stop. You're 20 minutes away. Oh. Oh. Well, great. Keep talking. What else you got? No, I'm still getting out of here. Russ. I got to say, man. I feel like we have more to talk about. I'm sure we do. I can talk to you for hours. Let's do it. Um, can, we talk, can we talk about, can we talk about, uh, no, we need to. Can we talk about artists, up and coming artists signing deals? Can we talk about this? Because I remember when watching you with Yachty and I just think deals are a very prevalent point to talk about. Russ, if you haven't noticed, 
this entire interview has kind of been about that. Yeah, but it's been about the all right. Well, well, then let me just ownership. say ownership. Let me just say what most artists are signing are royalty rate deals, right? In a royalty rate deal, let's say a, let's say a new artist standard. If you got a good lawyer, you're getting a seventeen percent royalty rate deal, right? Nowadays, right? Okay. Versus a profit split deal, and let's call it a 50 percent profit split deal. Now, the thing with the royalty rate deal, the pros are that the label's not taking expenses off the top. So when they're doing their marketing budget and whatever, it's not coming off the top, right? A profit split it is. That used to work back in the day when the expenses they were taking were packaging, distribution, et cetera, mechanical royalties. Now that streaming has come along, the expenses that a label will be taking off the top have decreased so much that you're better off just getting the profit split. Because now if it's 17% or if it's 50, now granted, back in the day, it was 17% of a bigger pot, right? Because the expenses didn't get taken off the top, but the profit split didn't. It still does. The thing is that the expenses getting taken off the top nowadays of the profit split because they're streaming, it's just so minuscule that you still end up getting a bigger percentage, which is why you need to take a profit split. But a lot of these artists, they just... 600K, a million dollars, say less. But here's the problem is that y'all not doing the math. Y'all not, first of all, y'all not getting a million dollars, but let's call it a million dollars. So you're getting a million dollars. Y'all are idiots. So you're paying your manager 20%. You're paying your lawyer five. And you're paying your business manager five, right? So that's 25, five. Was that 30%? So 30% of your million dollar advance, done. That's 300,000 off the top. So you got 700,000 to work with. You only need about 400000 a year to be in the top tax bracket, right? The top tax bracket, we, we're going to call it 50 because it's 43 a state plus the five federal, whatever the fuck. Let's just call it 50. So you got 700000 so cut that in half, right? What's half of 700000 350. So you got 350000 net. This is before you buy anything. So really, your million-dollar deal is only, you, you grossed a million, but you netted Three, what do we say? 300,000? 350. 350. So you netted 350. The problem is that you're spending a million when you have 350. And you get on Instagram and you yell about how someone owes you this, whatever. It's like, no, it looks you're great. An idiot. It looks great on Instagram. You guys are doing awesome. You're an idiot, though. But you're an idiot. You know what I'm saying? And I don't, and you know what? If this was 30 years ago, I'd feel bad for y'all. But you have access to all the information I have access to. So if you are not self-educating, I simply say it's your fault. We're not in the world where uh, knowledge is exclusive to a certain demographic of people. We all are privy to a certain uh, 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 you know, scope of knowledge. So if you're not self-educating and then you get fucked over and you want to cry on Instagram about... Man, I should have never signed. <laughs> it's like, you're damn right. But you're an idiot. You feel me? But that's your right, fault. We are not calling these people idiots. Anyway. Yes, we are. Listen, yes, we are. This yes, has we, been what, 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 you, what, would, this what, what would you call them? What would you call them? Um, Uninformed? Because that's a lie. People, what would you call people them? People that have more to learn. Really? People uh, that have more to learn? People that have more Russ. to learn? I don't think any of you Whatever. people are idiots. I think some of y'all are idiots. Y'all are grown with a this mortgage is, and kids and a mustache. Some of y'all are idiots. That's a fact. This has been informative and awesome. And thank you for allowing us into your heart. <laughs> yeah, yeah, people. <laughs> <laughs> nah, bro, hold on, Joe. For real? No, I ain't fucking with you. Uh-uh, <laughs> hold on. God damn it. Hold on, Joe. Another for idiot real? come out of his mouth, and nigga's gonna be mad at me for just sitting there. <laughs> Whatever, you're used to that. Oh, yeah, I don't give a fuck. Hold on, hold on. Hold no, on. we're not. Oh, no, 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 no. Joe, okay, listen, out of my, here, my, buddy. my mic's coming smoke. out anyway, but some of y'all yeah, are idiots. That's a fact. I see he's saucy.